many times with an older population, the assumption is that, of course, you should be depressed. I'm, I've lost my spouse. I've lost my independence. I have um, physical problems. Of course, I should be depressed. And my response to that is, while you're here, you might as well have the best quality of life you can have. So yes, we should definitely treat the depression. People die from severe depression. I've had patients that die, that have died because the depression has reached the point where it's been so severe that they end up lying in bed, they don't eat, they get dehydrated, and the snowball effect starts with geriatrics. The GDS screening in this video is used with a resident living in her own apartment in a continuous care facility. The resident had been visited previously by nursing students from a nearby community college. The students and their instructor have returned together to visit based on the students' concerns about the resident's overall mood and comments. Please note that the resident prefers to be addressed by her first name. You will also notice that after the screening is completed, several follow-up questions are asked. These questions are not on the screening form, but are based on the critical thinking of the practitioner performing the GDS screening and are designed to obtain additional information that can guide initial recommendations for care. I'm one of the nursing faculty at Community College of Philadelphia, and I think you met Venus and Rachel last week while they did their clinical rotation. When we first came in, that students had some concerns um, that you had verbalized to them about how you were feeling last week. And I wanted to just ask you a few more questions about your spirits, if that's okay. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're basically satisfied with your life? I think so. Okay. Have you dropped interest, um, have you lost interest in activities that you used to enjoy? Sometimes, okay. yes. Mm-hmm. Sheila, do you feel like your life is empty? Yes, at times I do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you often get bored? Yes. Mm. Sheila, do you feel like that, feel like you're in good spirits most of the time? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, particularly earlier in the day. Okay. Um, and morning used to be the good time for me, and it's not anymore. Are you afraid that something bad is going to happen to you? Uh, a couple months ago I was, Okay. but I don't feel that way today. Okay. Mm -hmm. What did you think was going to happen? Perhaps that somebody I knew was going to die okay. or get seriously ill. All right. Do you feel like, um, hap do you feel like you're happy most of the time? Not really. I may put on a good front, but I'm really not that happy. Mm -hmm. Do you often feel helpless? No, I don't. Do you prefer to stay home rather than going out and trying new things? Uh, depends what the new things are. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like you have the energy or the interest in going out and trying something else, or do you feel like you would just rather stay home? Oh, I think I'd rather stay home. Okay. Do you feel like you have more problems than most people your age in terms of your memory? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Do you think it's wonderful to be alive right now? Hmm. <laughs> uh, for the most part, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you feel pretty worthless the way you are right now? Occasionally. Like in the past week, how have... Yeah, there have been times when I've felt... Do you, f do you feel like you're full of energy? Not really. Okay. Do you feel like your situation is hopeless? Yes. Okay. I don't want to be a burden on other members of my family. Okay. Do you think that you're better off um, do you think that other people, most other people, are better off than you are? No, I don't. Okay. No. After asking the 15 screening questions, Lorreen goes on to ask a few additional questions based on the results of the screening. These questions help her explore some potential ways to treat the depression. 
Sheila, what have you done? What do you do that makes you feel better? What helps you feel better in terms of your spirits? I think it helps to get out okay. and um, get out of the apartment. It may be a pleasant apartment, but there aren't any <laughs> anybody else here, mm -hmm. so it's necessary to uh, meet people for meals and chat mm -hmm. or go to the short mm -hmm. story club. Where, okay. um, have um, similar interests in reading and discussing what we read. Right. And do you find that you have the energy to pursue those things? Some days I do and some days I don't. Okay. Do you? How would you describe your mood? Today? Mm -hmm. or Well, today it's good. Okay. Like in the past mm -hmm. week, how would you describe your mood? Uh, some days have been good and some days have been bad, up okay. and down. I think that... It, because we've had hot weather, that had some effect. Right, because you can't go out as much. That's right. where, that's right. where. Mm -hmm. Do you feel depressed? Uh, sometimes, okay. yes. Can you remember a time in your life that you have had trouble with depression? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More than one period of time in your uh, life? Probably about, I'm trying to think, maybe 20 years ago. Okay. And were you treated then? Yes, I was. Okay. Mm -hmm. With medication? Yes, medication. Okay. If you could make two things better in your life, what would those two things be? Oh my, what a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Hmm. If, the, if you could identify even one thing even that would one improve thing. your quality of life, what would that be? Probably being more with people and okay. less. More with people. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have thoughts that you would be better off if you weren't living? Um, occasionally. Okay. Occasionally. Ever mm -hmm. think about um, having any plan that you would harm yourself? Uh, 20 years ago when I suffered from depression, I can remember thinking it would be nice to stick my head in the oven. Okay. How about now? No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I think somebody talked me out of it 20 years ago. <laughs> Do you have somebody that you talk with in terms of your mood and when you feel low? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. A family mm -hmm. member or a friend? I have a spiritual friend that I talk mm -hmm. to. Do you talk with your primary care provider about how you're feeling in terms of your spirits? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what have mm -hmm. they? What have they said to you? What have they? Have they talked to you about any treatments? They have mentioned that perhaps antidepressants might help. Might help. Yes. But you're mm -hmm. not on any medications right not now. Not right now. Not right We're now. Just waiting. Right. Mm -hmm. And you continue to have the symptoms. And you had them. Right. You said for a couple of months. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a long mm -hmm. time to yes, feel it is. not so mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It certainly is. Yes. <laughs> Sheila, mm -hmm. some of the symptoms that you described are can be consistent with a depression. And we'll mm -hmm. probably we will talk with your doctor and one of the options is medication and talking therapy. Mm -hmm. Would you be amenable to treatment for the depression if we find that this is in fact a full blown depression? That really might be of some help. Right. Yes. It could help I with your quality of mm -hmm. life. Right. I think so. Depression is a medical diagnosis that encompasses many different symptoms, including um, concentration, interest, sleep, appetite, uh, mood, subjective mood, irritability, um, interest in activities that one used to enjoy, and there's a range of symptoms. The gold standard for diagnosis of depression is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, and they list nine criteria for depression. Two out of the nine must be present for any diagnosis of depression, minor or major, and they are depressed mood and loss of interest or pleasure in activities that used to be um, pleasurable. To be characterized as having a major depressive episode, you need to have five out of those nine symptoms present over a two-week period of time consistently and also representing a change from baseline usual functioning. To have more of a minor depression, diagnosis, it's usually, this, it's the same nine criteria, but usually it's less than the five 
but also present for the two-week period of time and having a change in function. It is not normal to be depressed when you're old. It is quite prevalent and, and common, and hence people sometimes think that it's a normal part of aging, but it is not a normal part of aging. Depression is quite prevalent among older adults. Approximately 15% of those over 65 suffer from depression, often undiagnosed and untreated. Um, Long-term care being the most prevalent, ranging anywhere from 16 to 30 percent, depending on which study you're looking. I've even seen as high as 43 percent. In outpatient care, the prevalence is approximately 10 percent. In acute care, the prevalence is about 23 percent. The Geriatric Depression Scale is a screening tool for depression that was initially developed in 1983 by two researchers, um, Yesavaj and Sheikh, so it's often known as the Yesavaj Geriatric Depression Scale. It, was, it is a screening tool, it is not a diagnostic tool. The initial tool in 1983 was a 30-item yes-no questionnaire. It has since been shortened in 1986 to be a 15-item yes-no questionnaire. One of the benefits of using the short form is that it only takes approximately five, maximum seven minutes to complete. Well, sometimes with the GDS, when you're asking the questions, some people want to expand on the answers, which is perfectly normal when you're asked some of those questions. So one of the challenges is just kind of redirecting people constantly back to the tool. Some of the other issues that come up sometimes are people who are so depressed and withdrawn that they don't want to answer the questions, or they're not able to answer the questions because of the depression. They have to be coaxed to answer them. Um, I think it's really important when we're doing that. So one of the things that increases the ease in administering the test is developing somewhat of a relationship with the patient. The cultural considerations that usually arise are with some people who don't feel comfortable answering what they consider personal questions. Um, what I might consider to be a personal question, somebody else might not consider that to be a personal question. So I think we always need to be aware of that. Other cultural considerations with the geriatric population are that depression might be perceived as a weakness. So I don't use the word depression. I never go in and say, I'm going to do a depression screening on you. I'm going to use a depression tool. I will start with saying things about, I'm concerned about your spirits. Um, you said that you were feeling blue. Let's talk a little bit more about that. I find that when, unless the patient brings up the word depression, that word can be used, can be a barrier at times. evaluated Sheila this morning. I wondered, Rachel and Venus, if you had any questions after um, the talk that we had with her about her spirits. I had a question. Um, how often should a health care provider um, assess for depression? Generally, they should assess for depression with an initial contact, an initial assessment on the, on the person, and then um, yearly, especially with geriatrics, and then also if there's any suspicion that some of the symptoms, as we had with Sheila this morning, might be indicative of depression. I felt like a lot of um, Sheila's answers to some of the questions, her frustrations and the things that made her sad were things that anyone might experience in her situation. Like, how do you differentiate between that and someone who's genuinely depressed? Well, the tool that we used this morning was just that. It was a tool. It was not diagnostic. So you're right that many of the things that she talked about, you would expect a lot of folks who are older to have frustrations with. The difference is that when a person, meets, a person has to meet the criteria for depression. So do you remember what some of the symptoms of depression were? Not enjoying activities that mm -hmm. she used to enjoy. Um, 
or just, you know, generally being withdrawn right. from her regular activities. Right. And concentration issues, appetite issues, sleep issues, um, subjectively feeling depressed. So some of the, the, the questions on this tool might seem repetitive, but sometimes that is because a person might respond better to one question than another question. Um, so yes, to answer your question, that was a long answer, but to answer your question that was that this is just a screening tool. We would continue to assess her as we did um, after we did the tool today. And at what point uh, do you decide, based on her answers to that assessment, that you would need to take some kind of further action or do a further assessment? When we do the geriatric depression scale, any score that's five or above indicates that we need to continue to evaluate for depression. And when we evaluated Sheila this morning, she had a score of 9 out of 15 on the GDS, the Geriatric Depression Scale, which indicates that we do need to do some further assessments with her. And what would your next step be with her? The next step would be to either refer her to um, a psychiatrist or a, or a geriatric clinical nurse specialist or nurse mm -hmm. practitioner who specializes in this, or sometimes her primary care provider could continue to do the assessment piece of it. And once it's ascertained that, yes, she does meet the criteria for depression, then we would start to talk about treatment options. What do you do when you're trying to ask these questions and you're just not really getting a lot of feedback from the person? Like, how do you get what you need? Which happens many times. She was very forthright and it was easy to sort of connect with her and develop a relationship and talk with her. Sometimes when people are more depressed, um, and I do think Sheila had a depression, but I, I have seen people with more severe depressions, they become so withdrawn they don't want to answer any of the questions and they're not able to answer the questions. Um, so you need to take more time in kind of developing the relationship with them. Um, some of what I do is look at pictures or try to c find some common ground that they have some interest with. Um, other times people answer the questions but continue to explain what their answers are and we have to kind of keep redirecting them back to the question because you really do want a yes or a no, which in a couple of the questions that I asked her, she wasn't giving me a yes or no, I had to go back and ask the question again. Sheila was quite forthright in her answers but also, like you said, was answering 50-50 to some questions mm -hmm. and then you had to redirect her to try to give you a yes or no based on how she was feeling in the past week. A common response is, I don't know, from someone who's quite depressed. Right. And she didn't say that at all, but that you'll see a lot. Right. And then again, you can redirect and say, most of the time in the past week, would you say more yes or more no? And redirect them to a yes or a no instead right. of I don't know or not answering. I noticed you added some questions of your own, just, I guess, to try to keep her on track. I did, to, to keep her on track and, order, and also to do a continued assessment. So the tool is one piece of it, and once we suspect that someone does have a depression, then we continue to do the assessment. As I said earlier, when we did the geriatric depression scale on Sheila, she achieved a score of 9 out of 15, which sends red flags up and tells us that there is a good possibility that she does have depression. And in looking over some of the questions that she responded to, which gave her um, a point were, have you dropped many of the activities and interests you used to like? Which indicates that she has no interest in things that she once enjoyed, which is one of the major symptoms of depression. The other question that she answered yes to was, do you feel like your life is empty? Yes. Many times that looks at like the hopeless, helpless piece of it. She also spoke about feeling like she was a burden to her family members. And that came out when we asked about, do you feel like your situation is hopeless? So again, another symptom that could indicate a depression. Um, the other thing that she answered yes to was, do you feel like you are pretty worthless the way you are now? One of the other things that Sheila said during the assessment this morning was that she felt worse in the morning and better in the afternoon, which many times we see with people who are depressed. It actually has a name. It's called a diurnal variation. Um, and she said that in the morning, the mornings used to be her good time, and now they were even her bad time. So I got the sense that she was feeling even more helpless about that. Um, she also spoke about having some thoughts that she would be better off if she weren't living. But what was your sense of that when she, when she said that? I felt like she was recalling feelings that she had in the past mm -hmm. about that, right. but not necessarily that she was thinking about suicide now. Right. She had what we, what we called more of a passive suicidal wish or passive suicidal thoughts versus active suicidal ideation. So do you remember what we talked about if somebody has active suicidal ideation? 
And how would that look? Well, you want to find out if they have a plan. Right. If they have an intent and they have a plan. And if they have an intent and a plan, we never can leave them by themselves. Um, they, it's, it's considered an emergency, so we would have to make contacts, keep them on one-to-one, -one, call their primary care doctor, their family members. They could not be left alone at that point. With Sheila's permission, I spoke with her primary care provider today, and he agrees. He hadn't seen her in a while um, and had not done a depression screening, but based on our findings, he agreed that it did sound like depression. He is coming out today to see her, to visit her. Um, and if he finds, which he thought that he would also, that she does have a major depression, he was going to put her on an antidepressant, um, put her back on an antidepressant because she's responded to them in the past. So I think at that point, um, or at this point, we should probably talk a little bit more about her plan of care, about what we should do. So when we, we talked to Sheila this morning, we, she talked a little bit about some of the things that she did enjoy. Even though she said she wasn't able to enjoy activities she once did, she could identify things like reading, like um, the Walkers Club. Um, she enjoyed the, she told me at one point she goes to uh, the short story um, club that they have here where they discuss short stories. But it sounds like um, over the past couple of months, some of those activities have tapered somewhat. Yeah, she, she's declined in, in her um, ability, her desires to, to want to um, pursue the things that she enjoyed most. Um, so part of her care of plan, the plan of care will be to assist her. We do um, meet with her once a day in the mornings because it's difficult for her when she gets up to start to plan, to right. organize. Right, she said her mornings weren't well. They, they've been well. tough for her. They've, mm -hmm. they've been a little harder. Um, so we do come in and we give her the support and we give her one choice. Um, we let her pick, but she, she will keep to the plan. It helps her to have a plan and she'll um, partake in one activity a day, such as the reading club. Um, the, to pursue this even further, when we see her progress, we'll have one of her friends come and um, pick her up and, and have her join. Right now, she's a little fragile, and it's a little easier for the nursing staff to encourage her. Our goal is to then have the friends come and take her and eventually have her be, you know, as she once was, fairly independent in her choices. Of, um, of personal and social activity. And that's a really good idea. That's a really good way to approach it. Folks who are depressed oftentimes feel overwhelmed. So if we give them the whole list of activities, yeah, they feel like too much. it's too much. They feel yeah. like I'm just going back to bed. I can't deal with it. But one thing is manageable. And once they finish it, they also feel like they've accomplished something. Absolutely. So it's what we call short attainable goals when we're okay. treating depression. We know that treatment for depression responds best to a medication piece and a talking therapy piece, and the talking therapy piece also involves getting folks involved with other activities. So her medication, the medication will have to be evaluated for side effects and also for whether or not she's responding to treatment. But the other piece of it is kind of the environmental piece. What are some other things you can think of that might um, help her? I would say one of the things that Sheila would actually do well with is the walking club, yeah. which is something that she's you know, very interested in doing. It meets three times a week and if we really work with her slowly, step by step, with the nursing staff to get her involved, you know, getting her in the morning, letting her know where they're mm -hmm. going, uh, what to expect beforehand, I think she'll do well with that. She even said that she likes um, to go out and talk with people and to find friends and be social, so that's, that can be a great thing for her. Mm -hmm. Sheila has a good future to look forward to if we continue with the, um, our plan. The medication piece is important. I'm glad the physician's coming out. We will pursue the social aspect, the environmental aspect, um, taking in consideration the Walkers Club, small limited social groups initially, perhaps pursuing that further as she shows um, you know, a little bit more independence and less depression. A very, very important, um, a, the, one, a very huge point to all of this will be to reassess Sheila. I think one of the things that we were talking about today related to depression, I think Sheila was an excellent example, is that it is a treatable condition in older adults, as it is in younger adults. It's not something to be ignored. It is something to be fully assessed 
and treated, and in this case, evaluated in a certain amount of time and then reevaluated as needed on that basis. Um, we talked about some wonderful interventions for Sheila, and I think hopefully in her case they'll work. They did last time she had depression, and so we have reason to feel optimistic that this plan will, will work, and if not, again, we can re we, you all can reassess, as you discussed. Um, but enhancing her quality of life, enhancing her social experiences and interactions with others here, with her friends, with the staff, I think is great. Getting her to a point of being active and requesting different activities down the road when she's able to do more than one at a time is fabulous. Enhancing her physical abilities, her cognitive abilities, keeping her stimulated will help increase her function and um, enhance her life greatly.